Hello everyone, welcome to our episode of Showcase on Warframe. Today's episode, the Heat Dagger. Now, the Heat Dagger. Well, and all daggers in general, are a little OP, if used correctly. Heat Dagger is a little different though. Now, I think I may have done the Heat Sword or not, uh, my memory eludes me for the moment. But regardless, it is different from other daggers, for the Ground Slam causes a flame out, spreading outward attack. I mentioned this dagger has been here for a very long time. Now, looking at the stats, it is not pretty quick for a dagger. A critical chance is pretty much nowhere. Status isn't that great either. And the overall stats, uh, they're okay, with mainly puncture with 30 some, and then, you know, very little slash and very, very, very little impact. So, with that said, is this weapon really weaker or more powerful than the other daggers? Well,. It may be leaning on the weaker, but it's got one thing that's definitely going for it. The Heat Blast attack. Now, where do you find this? Well, you get it only from alert missions. Say, ooh, we've got a catalyst to do. But yes, only alert missions. So, be in the right place, right time. Good luck. <laughs> that's all I can say to you. Now, going on to visual, you can see that this Red Veil guy has two Heat Daggers. Isn't he lucky? How come I don't have two Heat Daggers? I only got a st stinking one. Well, fine. Let's look at my stinking one, then. Anyway, you can see that the textures on the Heat Dagger are very well done. Where the Cobalt the Kronos was uh, very poor in textures and needs to update from when I did the video. This one, however, let's zoom in on those textures. It will look good. Let's zoom in further. Let's go too far, too close. Nope, we can go deeper. There we go. Look at that. Next, no pixelization whatsoever. Excellent textures. Looks very nice. Now, as the dagger itself, it's very strangely shaped because it's got no spine in the beginning, which is really weird. And I'm not sure what that white protruding part could possibly be. Otherwise, it's nothing. It's generally shaped like a red dagger, although you wield it backwards from what I'm noticing here. Now, for animation, you can see that we have various movements here, not very quick, but the ground slam causes the heat to spread outwards. This is 100% proc of fire. It's very nice. Also, stuns nearby opponents, causing them to be a flame. Flailing arms and, you know, not doing a whole lot. But I got some dummy targets here to test that range. You see, that's actually pretty good range. And damage not too bad at point of contact. Since this is now, uh, I have it with no mods on. So it's not too bad. Not bad at all. But you can see those you quickly damage falls off very easily at greater distances. And you can see that guy's not affected at all at the end of 5 meters. So it's not a very wide range. So against Grenier, most units, this will not be very effective. But oh well. Moving on. Alright, here it is. My ultimate build. Now, I'm going to throw this into question. I don't think there's an ultimate build. The ultimate build. Because I did this build, and then I realized it could have went better if, if I changed a few things. But, nonetheless, it's still more powerful enough. Alright. You can see I actually put a channeling build on this. Well, that's because there's no status, like, no status chance, and the freaking critical is non-existent. So, yeah. But only channeling damage, well, channeling cost of 1 per hit, and channeling damage at 2.1. Just to give it a bit of something, but you see a Riven Dispositions all 5 orbs. And you can see the puncture damage is 650, which is alright. And slash and impact are pretty much negligible. <laughs> the mod to use, probably pressure point for damage. Obviously for ball to puncture damage. Spoil strike for more overall damage, but slower attack speed, which is irrelevant if you think about it, which you'll see in a second. Killing Blow for the Trailing Damage, and Sunning Strike for more Puncture. And I have Finishing Touch to add more Finisher Damage, specifically. Yes. Why that? Because it's excellent Finisher Weapon. Now, there's two mods I didn't mention. First, my Riven, which is what it's worth. More status chance, 102%. And then it's an almost 90% channeling efficiency. But the big zinger I liked, maybe not to roll too many times to get it, was the finisher damage of 125% more finishing damage. I also have Covert Lethality, which is only for daggers, which adds a plus 100 extra damage on melee attacks or lethal damage or on finishers. That's the big one, it's finishers. So, let's put this to the test. Get rid of the those butchers I had, and let's grab some lancers. So, I'll grab about 8 of them, 10 of them, around there. Now, Gonna jack them up all the way to them taking level 80. Yeah. Okay, and let's make me invisible before I get killed doing this. So, base damage. This weapon sucks. Hard. Like, damn. 
Like, I got my ceramic dagger to go at lightning speed, and this is anything but. Okay, now I'm trying on uh, a channeling damage, which should make it mildly better, but at this point, the flame does not really a whole lot of damage against Grenier of this level. They're quite resistant to fire. You know what the channeling damage only makes it mildly better. Only mildly. But still usable at that point. And very little cost. So yeah. So, but this is not the way how daggers are meant to be used. No. Dagger is only meant for one and one use only. For finisher damage. Now, you can get finisher damage on enemies who are on their back, but it's better to have an enemy be stunned or knocked out. So I brought Equinox, which is actually pretty decent for this, for single targets. Good for reviewing. So, poof. Let's see the finisher damage. And he's dead. We'll see that again in slow motion later on. Anyway, let's go against some Corpus now. Uh, let's see. Now, I should even do even worse against them because it's puncture damage. So I'm going to grab about 10, 12 of these guys and I'm going to not take them to level 80. I'm going to take them bumping down to level 65. Yeah. So, how was it against them? Well, they group together, so it goes by a little bit quicker, but it's still, it's it's almost like watching the Grenier footage except their enemies are lower level. So yeah, not that great. Same deal. Turn on the channeling damage, it gets mildly better, but not a, by a huge amount. The flame attack does something, but not a whole lot to machinery. You get very minimal stun time, too. So yeah, could be better, could be worse. But although, otherwise, it's not really, again, not using it the right way, meant for finishers. But let's just use it the wrong way again one more time on some uh, Corrupted Chargers. Uh, grab 20 of them and back up to level 80. And this is go over by nice and quickly. <laughs> the flame damage really does pretty nicely on them. Although, I didn't, don't have a whole lot. I could have added more flame damage, but I don't think it's besides the point. I use it more as a stun than actually, you know, killing potential. But always you can chop down the enemies pretty quickly, especially when you turn the channeling damage on, because the enemies like to group around you. But that's besides the point. But anyway, let's move on to the more important part of this review. Okay, here I am with the strongest I am in the game. A heavy ball, heavy, corrupted heavy gunner. Loads of armor. Attacking normally, even with channeling, I'm not getting anywhere. Nowhere at all. So, we're going to do a little things a little differently. We're not going to try and just ignore him. We're going to actually kill this son of a bitch. Just knock him out with a bit of uh, abilities. And... Dead! Yep. Let's see it again in slow motion. Alright. You can tell the moment his vault life dest is destroyed right about there. And there. So, let's freeze frame. There's both damage values. You're reading that right. That is close to 250,000 damage. Yeah. That's with River Mod. Let's do it without the River Mod now. What well, how's the damage value? And it's still pretty much the same. This is what I call the dagger test. This is about the River Mod, without, all the, without the huge chunk of finisher damage. If I can't find a dagger that does this properly, I call that dagger a failure. Well, we can easily say the Heat Dagger passes that test with flying colors. Yellow colors. <laughs> Moving on to the pros and cons of the Heat Dagger. On the pros, it functions like every other dagger and kills everything in one hit, providing that they're stunned or passed out. <laughs> also, it has the Ground Slam maneuver, spreading that fire everywhere, as all the heat weapons do. The dual Heat Sword, Heat Sword, and Heat Dagger. So that's pretty great. Alright, that's kind of it for pros. There's nothing else going for the weapon. On the cons? I think it's one of the slowest daggers. Not the slowest, it is one of the slowest. I think the Sheev still is the slowest in terms of all the daggers. Yeah. And the flame damage is not great for killing opponents, it's mainly for stunning. Is what I kind of uh, come to the conclusion of. But still, it's still alright. Going on to the score for the dagger. Damage gives a 10 out of 10 because, you know, it kills everything. If you can knock it out, it dies. Reach so, 2 out of 10. Design, I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. It does all the things that usual Dagger does, but it does a little bit more of the ground slam and flame. It just doesn't do it at the same speed. Speaking of which, I'm going to give that a 4 to 10. My Ceramic Dagger can easily reach almost triple the speed of how I use this in the end. So that's just a pretty slow Dagger. Not the slowest, but far from the fastest. 
Miscellaneous, I'm gonna give a six out of ten. You can get you most people will get this probably at some point, and if you're lucky you'll get it early in the game, and it's not too complicated to build. It's pretty easy actually. And it's a pretty good weapon starting off. So overall I think it's pretty great. So in total, I get Heat Dagger 30 out of 50. It's an exceptional weapon. Definitely useful in the right hands. Now going on to the judgment for the Heat Dagger. Now when it comes to daggers, it's a bit murky because no, they're not very popular. In fact, I think they're the least popular melee weapons besides the machetes. <laughs> but uh, if you like any daggers and just want to kill anything in one hit and use Warframes and knockout abilities, this is easily one that's worth it. If you're not that person, however, it's not worth it. But I'm going to say in judgment that it is worth it because when you, the end result is a weapon that kills pretty much everyone through finisher damage. And that's been Showcase for Taylor. Thank you all for watching. Hope to see you guys next time. Take care out there.